if there's anyone here who's been on LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, you would have known him as a junior VC. That's the personal branding that he's done, and I think it's a great job. Do you want to quickly uh, just start off, uh, Avril, talking about uh, you know a junior VC and uh, sure. Um, just before I start, how many founders here? How many aspiring founders here? Okay, awesome. Um, I'll, I'll not talk too much about a junior VC, I'll talk about Kerala. So I'm here after, I think, 12 years. Um, and I think this is the land of entrepreneurship. So uh, you have, I think the first trading routes that were set up from India were from Kerala. Um, you have very, very big founders um, of uh, Lulu Mall and the Landmark Group. Um, so I think there's a lot of potential here. I'm uh, very excited to be part of this conversation. And uh, I look forward to meeting a lot of founders here who are trying to build something out of Kerala. Um, so just wanted to start with that. Great, great. Um, so before we get started, I know the topic is kind of uh, something that's not, uh, has words that excite, uh, you know, a founder or a VC. But do you want to kind of uh, take a quick moment to define what is a recession? Primarily, you know, on, uh, from an Indian context point of view. Yeah. Uh, it's a big irony because I'm an optimist and I'm talking about a recession. So, um, it, it's, it's not my usual uh, optimism if you've seen me, my posts. Uh, I think like s structurally a recession is when you have two declining quarters of growth. Um, when things slow down, there's a marked reduction in economic activity across the board. Um, I think, you know, that's how you would statistically define a recession. Um, for a country like India, if you don't reach a growth rate of 7%, I think at least to me, fundamentally, even though technically it's not a recession, it feels like that because for us to really uh, make use of our very large young population, we'll have to keep growing at a rate like that. So, you know, that's how I would define a recession at least. Okay, so uh, from your point of view and based on data, so is there actually fire in the building? Yeah. As in building here is India as a country. That, that's, a, that's a very good... Uh, analogy. I actually like the fire in the building analogy. So you can think of the world or our countries as many buildings um, and if there's a recession, there's a fire. Um, the, Europe is already in a recession, technically. The US is very close. China has been slowing dramatically and with the COVID lockdowns, that's 60% of global GDP, uh, which is declining. Um, and I don't think uh, India will have it any different. I think we'll have slowing growth if you see the revised forecast. Like I said, 7% is the number. Um, and, you know, they're forecasting India will be at 5 to 6%. I think things are getting pretty slow and the world is in a recession. I also think the next year is going to be worse than this year. Uh, so, I mean, that's not very exciting news, uh, you know, both for founders. Uh, so, typically when we have, uh, you know, a recession, how do you see it impact a country like India, you know, in general? Right. So, um, I think that we are in a good situation and a bad situation. Um, we have to really grow um, and a recessionary time um, is problematic. Now, if you look at India as one building and there is fire um, and the startup ecosystem are some rooms uh, in, in that building. I think that the, uh, the recession will in general make it harder for the startup ecosystem and then we can, you know, focus on that. Um, the, the big reason is because there is something called a flight to safety. Uh, so money will go to more safe sources of returns. So you'll see that a lot of investors that were investing in the venture world um, will pull out and reallocate to bonds and maybe go back to the US. Um, so that's one flight to safety. The other thing that very few people talk about is a flight of safety of talent. Um, there are a lot of you who've started companies or who are planning to start companies 
um, many of you will need to get team members. What I've seen in the last, um, last year or at least the last few months is that startups are not in vogue anymore. Um, so it's becoming a little harder to get talent. Um, and I think that's, that's really the broader impact of the fire in the building and the fire in the room, uh, the startup ecosystem. Uh, people are very wary of getting into it. Um, and I think uh, on the Indian ecosystem, you'll see there's a lot of impact. I'll just share some details on what's happening. So if you're tracking the ecosystem, uh, last year we had 44 billion of VC funding. I think this year it is somewhere between 17 to 18 billion, which is less than half, which is dramatic in one year, right? And even if you look at the beginning of this year, just before the war and today, uh, the number of deals that are being done, the number of investments um, that are coming in, they are at least down by 50%. So it's very real. Um, and I think the reason is because a lot of the money in the Indian ecosystem comes uh, from the US. Um, it's going back and people have become much slower um, in, in, in the Indian ecosystem. The fire is very real in the room. So, I mean, coming to talent, I think last year and the year before, um, there's all this news about, you know, how tech in startups pay insane amount of money, yes. you know, attracting and people yes. jumping ships. Yes. Uh, and now all of a sudden things have gone south. Yes. Uh, so, and with a lot of thousands of people being laid off of, of these great startups, do you think that has impacted the psyche of, you know, someone yes. looking for a job? And yes. I think there will be some people who may never come back to the startup ecosystem because of the experience. Um, but why are these layoffs happening is a broader question, right? Um, if you look at a large tech company like a Facebook or if you look at even large tech companies in India like Flipkart or uh, Swiggy, um, the reason why they are laying off is because they predicted the growth to follow what 21 did. Right? So if you had a scale up of 20% in 21, you'll have a scale up of 20% in 22. And the reason was legitimate. It was because uh, the pandemic had made us all go back home. Uh, digital adoption just went through the roof. Um, and I think it was fairly reasonable for technology companies to expect that. So they, they hired for growth. And suddenly growth is gone. So what do you do with so many people who have been hired for growth? You let them go. Um, now the interesting thing is if you look at public markets or if you look at companies or if you look at uh, performance, the legacy companies, um, I remember sharing this, um, Exxon has become more valuable than Zoom uh, when Zoom was twice as valuable as Exxon a year ago, right? Um, so there's, there's a movement back into uh, the ecosystem that was legacy. Uh, oil is the new oil, right? They keep saying data is the new oil. Uh, so, you know, people have gone back to physical and the older economy. Um, I think a lot of people will not potentially return. And, you know, why they were laid off is, uh, is because a lot of these companies were expecting growth. They need people to handle it. Now the growth is not happening. So, so how does all of this play out and, you know, affect the current day startups? Those right. are in the building right, right. now. Yeah. That's a very, very good question. So uh, to all of you who are founders today, I'll address that first and then we'll go to the 2B founders. I think there are three things that will happen. The first is um, cash. Cash becomes um, a big question mark. What, how do you get it and what do you do with the cash you have or if you don't? Uh, the second is there's going to be a very important and probably life deciding trade-off between growth and survival. Um, that's, that's going to be your number two. And number three is in this environment, you'll have to take a decision between continuing or selling your company. Sometimes that's a call that you have to take. So I'll address the three of them, right? So the first is cash. Now, if you've raised as a founder in the last, um, year, you've had it really lucky. You'll have probably two or three years of runway. You don't need to raise again. Um, it's really good. It's a good situation to be in. Um, and you must do everything you can to preserve this cash. Um, as you know, you were talking about layoffs. That's one way 
reducing the team size, uh, reducing burn. Um, so when you when you have cash, it's in a you're in a good situation. When you don't, you have to probably answer question number three, right? So I'll address that last. Uh, the second question is, um, do I survive or do I grow? Uh, it's a very tough call to make because as a startup, you get valued for your growth. Now, you're in a situation where you have raised some money, you have to grow into the valuation, and then you have to raise your next round. Um, survival versus growth will be a big trade-off, and there's no clear answer, actually, for every, every company. You'll have to take that call based on uh, the kind of uh, company you are. I think it would be prudent to reduce growth expectations because everybody, including investors like myself, um, are expecting lesser. Um, and I say this very often to people, in these kind of markets, survival is a competitive advantage. Just don't die, right? I had shared this tweet a long back, which was, I think, Swami Nityanand saying, just don't die. Uh, come back to me after three years. That is what uh, <laughs> the VCs are saying today. Just don't die. Um, so it's important that you survive. I would, if like there's a real choice between growth and survival, you should survive. And, you know, then you can grow. Um, on the final question now, when you're in a distressed situation, you don't have cash and you're not growing, uh, there are a lot of larger companies that have money, right? And you have the Googles of the world or the Facebooks of the world. Um, generally, in these kind of markets, you see these big guys coming in and snapping up companies. A lot of M&A happens. Uh, I think that's a question you have to answer if, let's say, you have six months of runway, you're not growing. Um, and you don't know what to do next. So this will be the impact on already existing founders. And these are the questions in my head if I was a founder. And all the founders I work with have invested in, they're trying to ask and answer these questions. Also, uh, one of the trends we have seen is, uh, I mean, like when coming down to cutting costs, uh, mostly you hear about, uh, you know, just layoffs, right, uh, to save up on uh, cash. Uh, but we also see examples where, uh, you know, they have gone back to their employees and said, hey, take a 10-15% cut in your pay, you know, and we'll not have to lay off uh, a lot of team members. Do you have an opinion on, I mean, I know there's no right or wrong, but do you have an opinion? On that? Yeah, so it's a, it's a good question. So when you look at a startup uh, cost structure, uh, it will largely be marketing and team. Right? There will be little else. Obviously, if you are selling a product, you have gross margin and other such things. Um, but it's largely marketing and uh, marketing and team. Now, a lot of companies have rammed down marketing because growth is not expected. So that's one area they've saved. But the hardest thing for a human being, very philosophically, is not having anything to do. Right? So I'm just trying to answer your question on take a pay cut, et cetera, right? There are a lot of roles that have suddenly become redundant because there's no growth. For example, Facebook uh, built out an entire business function. I'm just taking an example, and now that business function is not growing. What will the business team do? They have nothing to do. Uh, so in that situation, do you keep the team and they're really upset and sad because they have nothing to do, or do you lay them off? Um, and, you know, make life easier for both. So on one side, you have a choice of a slightly l lower salary, and the other side, you have a choice of laying off the person, but they're happier. Um, so I think that if there is no work for that team and you can't create it, um, I think it's better for both in that relationship to move on. But um, I've seen larger companies like the Tatas, for example, they rarely lay off. Um, but that's because they're so huge, they can repurpose people here and there. So um, I think for a smaller company, it's a bit hard. For larger companies, it's probably easier. Um, and when to lay off a person and do a pay cut, I think it depends on whether they have the, you know, the work. So yeah, I mean, uh, from examples of your own portfolio companies, do you now go back to founders and say, hey, now, you know, try to work up on a business model or a, you know revenue generator as compared to trying to grow or you're still okay with them going
going 12 months just ensuring that they don't die and fight for another day yeah yeah i think growth is cool profitability is cool there are flavors of the season uh, i've seen this happening that you know founders say oh i'm going to do growth at all costs and then when the market turns they're like oh let's do profitability at all costs i don't think it works that easily you can't just switch on and switch off the lever um at the stage i invest in we are they're too early anyway so they're discovering a business model etc um my suggestion to them is to reduce the experimentation that could be costly so increase your runway um you know fundamentally a startup is a hypothesis test right uh, i have a hypothesis that this thing will work in the world that's a startup right when i keep going back to facebook zuckerberg said the world needs a social network it was a hypothesis it worked really well zuckerberg could have done something else and it didn't work so the experimentation is very important but now you can't do very costly experimentation so at least at my stage the suggestion is that don't do very costly experimentation uh, be very careful write this period out generally my recommendation is 3 years because when you target 3 years you get to 2 and a half or 2 and my sense is this will take at least that much time uh, so that's what i recommend to my founders who are in the earlier stages um but as a later stage investor um the feedback is a bit more different it is find revenue uh find a model that works search for profitability now fundamentally some businesses cannot search suddenly search for profitability they'll say we are searching for profitability but they don't have revenue and i think they might die in the very large companies they will have challenges because they're being forced to discover revenue faster than they than they had planned i mean there are certain uh, sectors or segments in fintech which is an area i'm passionate about uh, for example the consumer neo banks has been a space uh, which doesn't necessarily have a a clear cut revenue generating model day one but it's more of a hook where you know you can turn on the taps uh, later down the road so do you think this will impact that i i think so it's like that classic story of the butterfly in the cocoon uh you try to help the butterfly get out of the cocoon by opening it and then the butterfly dies because it needed x number of months to be there uh i think some companies because they are being forced to figure out a model they might never get there uh is my view so um i don't know if you can accelerate it like people say oh let's become profitable it doesn't work like that so with all of these things in mind uh, you know today there will be a lot of people here who are thinking of starting up you know start their venture they have this idea that they want to get started on uh, what's the you know basic uh, things that you would advise them uh, probably different from what you would have say 2 right. years ago right it's become very cool in the vc industry to say it's a very good time to start i think that's that's very bad advice right it's very self serving for the vc to say hey uh, start a company but i'm not going to do anything right like if the vc thinks it's very good to start a company why shouldn't the vc do it himself or herself um and the classic uh, examples are oh you know there are many good companies that are born out of recessions there's airbnb and there's uber but if you look at the data um in the last and this is us data because india really hasn't had a recession before this one and then we'll see what happens um in the 2007 to 9 time frame there were 97 unicorns that were born which is approximately 25 26 ballpark 29 unicorns per um per year and if you look at the other 20 years you have almost 980 unicorns which is almost 50 so in the non recession years twice as many unicorns were born than in the recession years and this is born as in started right they became unicorns later um so i don't think it's necessary that a recession is a fundamentally better time to start a company um wh- why recession is good is because you will be more thoughtful and uh, careful uh, in good years people blow a lot of money and you would have seen the ftx collapse for example um things go south very fast um but i think in a recession 
Starting a company will just make you more thoughtful. It doesn't necessarily say that, oh, your company will be better. I think if you're more thoughtful about your company, you will be better, but that you can be in any market, right? Um, the other thing I believe is if you have an idea, don't try to time the market. If you feel the time is right, just go ahead and do it. Don't sit and say, oh, I'll wait for a bull market or I'll wait for a recession. It's, it's, it's not a good idea. Uh, the only thing that I will warn you, um, and it's a good thing, is that it'll be harder to fundraise. Your valuations will be lower. It, you know, last year it was crazy, the valuations. And the fundraise will be smaller. But that doesn't mean you can't build an enduring business. That's my view. So yeah, I mean, this is a great conversation. We can go on and on talking about the various aspects. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there are a lot of entrepreneurs here. Uh, are there any questions? We can take a couple of quick questions if we have show of hands and we can... Uh, can we have a microphone uh, passed on to the gentleman there? Microphone. Can we have microphone passed on to... So, uh, Futurist Economics predicts that 2023 would be like that of 2008 recession, the Great Depression of the 2008. So, what would be the status of unicorn density and other uh, unicorn density during 2023? Um, so, your question is what happens to unicorns and unicorns Pretty next year, right? Um, I think a lot of unicorns that were born this year, in 2022 and 21, they will have a hard time next year. Um, my sense is many unicorns that have been built may not remain unicorns in the next year. Um, so 21, there were 44 unicorns. In 22, there are 21, 22. I think next year will be even lesser. So it's the creation of unicorns and unicorns will be slower. In fact, this last quarter we've had zero unicorns in India. I think the creation of unicorns and unicorns will be slower. I also think the unicorns and unicorns that have got created, they might not remain next year, some of them. Thank you. Okay.